Funny Knicks Nation. Today is Thursday, the 25th day of July 2024. I hope you're all safe and healthy today. I hope your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are saving lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage to keep our places clean and those also that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children that are victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on those who perpetrate these things. Double curses on those who use these things to make money. And double curses on the perverts that create the great demand for these things. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, children, seniors, veterans, families, homeless in the United States of America, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So yesterday, it was announced on several outlets, starting, of course, with the three wise men, Wojnowski, Ian Begley, and Shams, that Tom Thibodeau was extended for three more seasons. He, had, he was in the last year of his deal, this coming season of his original deal that he signed four years ago when he came to New York. And now he's got three additional seasons. Uh, he's 66 years old, so this will take him to almost he'd be 70 years old by the time you get to the end of this contract. There have been those during the whole contract from year one all the way through this past season yelling, screaming that Tom Thibodeau should be fired. These are the short-sighted knuckleheads that we have, unfortunately, in Knicks Nation. And all the while, I was trying to explain that this man is building up. And then others, there are those that say, well, he ain't never won a championship, so he ain't no good. That's another ignorant point. So we have been building for the last four seasons to what we have now, a legit championship contender. Okay, a legit contender. And... In all sports, and well, I, I know, let me put it this way. I've been really a fan of three major sports most of my life, baseball, football, and basketball. Um, I also love track, and I like boxing as well. But baseball, football, and basketball have been something I've been following since I was, you know, six years old. So um, in all three of those sports, though, when you're building a team that you want to win a title, you start with defense. Okay? And even in baseball, you start with pitching, and then from pitching the infield and the infield to the outfield, and you want these guys, if you can get all golden glovers, that's what you want, and then you you know, you know build up some hitting. But defense, same with football, defensive line, you control the line of scrimmage. Then you have cornerbacks like Revis, Darrell Revis, that can lock down people to stop the pass. And then you build from there your defense, 86 Giants. 80 was 84 Bears, 85 Bears uh, under Buddy Ryan. You built Tom, uh, you know, then you have Bill Parcell with the defense. You built tremendous hard hitting defense. And then you can get a quarterback and you go from there. Basketball, you start with defense. And so when you have a coach that wants to win, a real winner, you're going to have a guy that starts on the defensive end. Okay. Generally, offensively, there's a way of playing basketball where the ball moves. You get a lot of ball movement, right? And the greater coaches generally are using what they have offensively and getting the most out of it. But when you want to play basketball the right way, which goes all the way back, really, you know, you're talking about a Bobby Knight at University of Indiana. You're talking about a Dean Smith at University of North Carolina. Um, you know, you, you, you're talking about guys that go back into the 50s and 40s and 60s that know how to coach basketball. And so there's a way of playing the game with John Wooden at UCLA that knows how to play the game, what's called 
the right way, okay? And so Tom Thibodeau, wanting to be a winner in the game of basketball, starts off with defense, okay? And then he starts offensively. He wants to get the best out of what his talents are for his players, and he does want to play the right way. Now, you end up with a starting off with a Julius Randle, which is all you had in 2020, 2021. You build on him. Then you get a Jalen Brunson, who is definitely, definitely an isolation style player. Okay, so Tom works with that. The rest of the team, the ball, you know, like the Knicks are not the greatest assist team, but they're working with the strengths of what they have. Okay, so you start with defense. Tibbs has started with defense. And for him, defense means a rim protector in the middle. He is not interested in stretch fives. He wants a guy that's going to be able to protect that rim, protect that paint, and get his rebounds. Okay, that's what he needs. And so he's done that. And again, all of y'all that was whining about firing him for the last four years. And I've had to actually do videos defending Tom Thibodeau because of some of y'all. He needs to be fired. And this is the thing that kills me about Knicks Nation. Some of y'all really think that you know more about basketball than Tom Thibodeau. Like you know how to coach better than him. It's amazing to me with some of the comments I get. But we have been blessed to have him as our coach for the last four seasons. And this is the end result. Now, also just as important, which is what we've been preaching from the beginning, in New York, prior to Tom Thibodeau, um, it was hard for a coach to last more than two seasons. You know, you go back over the last 20 years. In fact, I think I read uh, uh, today in an article that the last coach to last at least five seasons was Jeff Van Gundy. That was 20 years ago, okay? Nobody lasts more than five seasons, and, and most of it was two seasons. Most times, two scenes before people are howling for somebody to be fired. If you want to build a winner, if you want to build a long-term sustainable winner, you must have, not LeBron James, not Michael Jordan, you must have stability in your front office and on the sideline. That's what you need. Stability is the key. And all the winning franchises that are long-term, multiple champion. They have that. Sometimes, like in the Los Angeles uh, Lakers, they had the bus family was the ownership. And, and they had stability because that was the same family that owned the team from the time Magic Johnson got there all the way to now. The bus family has their hands on the franchise. And that stability helped them. Then they win championships. They bring a, a Phil Jackson and they win championships by trying to keep stable. Now, now at this point, they're unstable. On the sideline, okay? And that's causing a problem. Miami Heat, of course. Pat Riley gets there after he leaves the Knicks in the 90s. He's still there, okay? And since he's been there, they won three championships, okay? Eric Spoelstra has been on that sideline a long time. And when LeBron first came, there were people calling for Eric Spoelstra to be fired. Not the right coach for a team this talented is what they used to say. He's still there. And no matter what type of team... They have, they're always in the hunt, Miami. They're always there, okay, because the stability of the franchise. Of course, we could talk about the San Antonios. We could talk about the Boston Celtics. Same thing. You must have stability in the front office and on the sideline. You can't expect overnight results, and this is the problem in New York. A lot of the media expects overnight results, and unfortunately, it bleeds to the fan base. You have to have, and this is true in life as well, I've learned, you want to have a five-year plan. Like, where do we want to be in five years? That's in life as well as basketball. So when you're sitting down with, in your personal life, you're at a certain point in your life, everybody is. You're at a point in your life, so then you're saying, okay, so where do I want to be in life in five years? Where do I want to look like? Where do I want to live? What do I want my life to look like in five years? Well, in basketball... It's like that. It's a five-year plan, which is why you have for the rookie contracts, it's a four-year guaranteed rookie contract. In the first round, these guys get four-year money guaranteed, right? So even if they flop out, they got guaranteed four years. Well, the person, the reason for that is because if you're going to build from the ground up, if you're going to be rebuilding, you want to give yourself four years, and I say five, to build your team. So we just finished year four 
under Tom Thibodeau. He has won 55% of his games. Okay, over that four-year period, we have had playoff in three of the four years. Two, the last two years, the Knicks have won first-round series. That's building your team. Then here, in the middle of year four, they traded out future pieces, which is Emmanuel Quickly and R.J. Barrett and Quentin Grimes, for present pieces, O.G. and Anobi. Okay, and then you get Presh Sachua, and hopefully we keep him, and then you got also now Macaw Bridges. So you've built your team to now you have, or in your year five, your championship contender. This is the best that you can hope for um, when you're building a team as the Knicks did from ground up. And Tom Thibodeau has been a major part of that rebuilding process. And so now we're ready to look for the championship. Tom Thibodeau, you got, now you got him for this year and three more seasons after that. Um, that and that's why I wanted actually Giant Johnny Bryant to stay here. I can understand certainly why he left because he wants to be a head coach. But I felt like I want that stability so that they can choose an heir apparent Tibbs and Leon and the crew as Tibbs is coming to his 70 year old. And maybe he wants to go into front office. He would be great in the front office working with Leon after that. But you get. Tibbs come into the front office and they can choose a successor. So what happened in Boston? Danny Ainge, who had been in the franchise, you know, for 20, 30 years as a player and as a coach and as an executive, he, he chooses Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens becomes the head coach. Then Brad Stevens moves to the front office and they choose Ime Odoka, I think his name was. But of course, we know there was a problem there. So he chose this young guy to take over another young guy. But they have a stable situation. They're not looking to fire him from one losing season or, or rebuilding situation. So that is what you're looking for for New York. You want the next guy to be a guy that they can groom that's a little younger than the head coach like Johnny Bryant was that can step in and continue long-term sustainable winner, understands the culture, understand what is expected, and bring his own footprint or thumbprint on that. So right now, we're in a very, what am I saying? We're in a very good place. We got stability in the front office. We got stability on the sideline. And, and, and uh, emblematic of that is Tom Thibodeau getting this extension. There were people asking me last year, do you think Tibbs will get an extension? I think he'll get fired. I don't know what some of y'all, you know, anyway, you got to look back at a bigger picture. And I and I guaranteed you at the time, I said he will definitely get an extension. He's going to, and people's like, I don't know how you can see it. I don't see it. It's like, get you a pair of these so you can understand. Look at a bigger five-year picture. This is where we're at. And so now the Knicks are in contention to win a championship. Tom Thibodeau has uh, pretty much he's got at least eight guys uh, that are his guys that know his system. Maybe more than eight because you got the starters. You got Jew, Mitchell Rob. Now, OG is his type of guy. Defensive, you know, strong, both sides of the ball, um, uh, you know, plays basketball the right way. Of course, there's Jalen Brunson. You know, enough said. Mikhail Bridges, definitely a Tibbs guy. Then you got his favorite, his new grandson, his heart. And you got DiVincenzo, another tough roughneck, right? And, of course, there's Deuce McBride. And these are, that's that's eight right there. And these are his type of guys that he will ride or die with. Whether people, like, if you notice, up until last year, he brings back Taj Gibson. Why? That's a guy that's his guy. That he had from Chicago, tough, gritty, defensive minded, knows the game, plays the right way. That's a Tom Thibodeau dude. And he, he'll bring back him. Now, uh, you know, now Taj has signed another contract with somebody. I hope bless him. But if he was available, he said himself, Tibbs will call him if he needs him. And that's how loyal Tibbs is to guys that are his guys. So the eight that I just named are his dudes. He, He's going to ride or die with them, regardless. Then you just now have Jericho Sims. Now, I was watching a little video of Jericho working out, working on turnaround jump shot. And you see, if you watch it closely, he's shooting. He, when he roll, when he spins to his to his um, left to the, toward the baseline, he's shooting with his left hand. 
<laughs> and he spun toward the middle, he shooting with his right hand. See, he's working hard. And not only that, Jericho always looked like he was in shape, but he looked like he's a little bit even more svelte now this summer. So those are Tibbs guys. They're always, they're gym rats. They're always working hard. And that's another thing that we all now, hopefully, understand. That when you come to play the Knicks or the Knicks come to visit you, no matter how good a night you might be having, they're going to fight you for 48 minutes. They're going to give you 48 minutes of fight. Okay? They're going to give you 48 minutes of fight. And so that's, you know, back in the time before Tibbs, you know and I know. That wasn't happening all the time. 48 minutes of fight? Nah. Nah. Okay? Under Woodson? Okay. That was an exception. For the last 20 years, we've been getting garbage. Okay? Not getting back on defense. Not playing any defense. No defense at the top of, you know, at the point of attack. We've been catching that. For the last four years, we've had it. And now, we got it for at least four more years. This year and then going forward. So, um... It's, we're in a good place. And so anybody that comes into the, the play with the Knicks to get on the roster, and I like to use Jacob Toppin as an example. His brother, Tom, you know, wasn't you know, necessarily Tom's dude when he got drafted, but OB learned the culture. OB worked hard. OB became a total player on both ends of the basketball court. And he, and he went to Indiana and got his money, and the Knicks did him a a favor, which y'all still didn't catch at the time. They wasn't trying to get what they can. It was doing Obi a favor, and they did him a further favor, signed his brother that didn't get drafted, Jacob. And Jake comes in, picks up the culture, works his tail off, uh, a gym rat, uh, comes rebounding, using his, his, his athletic ability to rebound the basketball, also learning to shoot in the G League. And I think and hope Jacob will have a roster spot. In fact, I think he's the only one of those guys that are basically practice players that now has his contract guaranteed by the Knicks. So that's what you want. That's the culture you want to build. So now anybody coming to New York, you know, you're going to have to be able to play some defense or you ain't going to play. And you better be able to, you better be a gym rat. It ain't like you got to become, you better know you got to come in here as a gym rat or you can't play. Thank you, Tom Thibodeau. Thank you, Leon Rowe. Thank you, New York Knicks organization. Thank you, James Dolan, for letting these boys cook. Now, we got a stability. The league is on notice. We back, and we here. So long.